Hello and welcome once again to India Today, Mood of the Nation, brought to you uh, in association with Sea Water, India's most credible and long-running poll for 24 years, the biannual survey in the latest India Today magazine. And we've been looking at various questions over the last day or so, including what we are about to do now. We're going to be asking questions linked to the state of the opposition as well as the government's COVID management. But Rahul Kawal, in election season, mood of the nation, lots of uh, debate over our findings yesterday. It's going to become even more contentious when we look at opposition leaders, Rahul. There's been just so much focus on the Prime Minister and the BJP government that we want to take some time to focus on Modi versus who? It's quite clear that Rahul Gandhi hasn't emerged as a leader who can match Prime Minister Modi in terms of popularity. The distance between Modi and Rahul keeps increasing. So who do people of India believe is best suited to take on Prime Minister Modi and the BJP in this section of the Mood of the Nation? Rajdeep and I will focus on that. We have a full panel of people to take all the questions. Yashwan Deshmukh of Sea Voter, which has done this survey for the latest India Today magazine. Rahul Varma, fellow at the Centre for Policy Research, who tracks politics very closely. Uh, also, Sanju Varma, spokesperson of the BJP. Gurdeep Sappal, spokesperson of the Congress. Shantanu Sen, spokesperson of the Trinamool Congress. So let's turn to the first big question that we have on the show today. Let's cut the chase. Best suited to lead the opposition is a question we posed on the mood of the nation. Remember the latest India Today here says 11% in January 2021 went with Mamta Banerjee. She's up now to 17. In fact, the same figures as she had in August. Arvind Kejriwal uh, had 20% uh, in August 2021. He's down to 16%. But he's at number two. Rahul Gandhi comes third at 11% when asked this question, best suited to lead the opposition. Akhilesh Yadav is at 7%. We also asked, can Mamta Banerjee really lead and build a united opposition? And this is what the survey said. 48% said, yes, she can. That's almost half. No was 38%. Don't know was 14%. Can the Grand Opposition Alliance, the so-called Mahagadbandan that's talked about, challenge the BJP? In uh, August, 49% said yes. That remains the same five months later. And the no figures are also more or less the same, 43% versus 41%. But the big talking point, the first big talking point that's coming in is Mamta Banerjee ahead of the others. For the first time, she is number one when it comes to who is best suited to lead the opposition. Yashwan Deshmukh, you, since you've done the survey, it's your responsibility. A lot of Congress people are sending me messages saying that this is a rigged survey. You want to show Rahul Gandhi down, Mamta and Kejriwal up. You want to respond? Well, it's an open-ended uh, question, you know, and people have answered whatever they can answer. And, uh, and uh, uh, if you look into the main uh, uh, prime ministerial uh, choice question actually people have answered even for uh, Sonia Gandhi ji and including Priyanka Gandhi so basically if you will move into only one option giving them as one single option of Rahul Gandhi from the Congress side then probably his ratings will be roughly about 19 or 20 percent which is like kind of a, a vote share projection that the UPA is carrying right now but if you will ask them as a free uh, single name which is coming to their mind uh, Mamta Banerjee's numbers are also kind of flared up, Rajdeep. I must say this because uh, she is coming from a state of West Bengal, uh, which is like 42 seats out of 543. It's a huge state with a substantial population and big number of people or Bengali population saying that she can be a prime minister is also uh, uh, one of the reasons that... Uh, but this is a national survey, right? 65,000 includes BJP, survey. Congress voters, non-BJP, non-Congress voters. Absolutely. So this is a broad absolutely. view across India. It's not disproportionate it's, it's to Bengal in any no, way. No, it's not just one. I'm just telling you ki, uh, how, how the numbers have gone up for her. That also includes the fact that she was she was instrumental. She defeated the BJP left, right, left, right and center in, in West Bengal Assembly election. And that has created a kind of a, a positive sentiment for us. Right. However, uh, Arvind Kejriwal's numbers are even more critical, Rajdeep, as per me, because 
if you will look into the total overall support base of Mamta Banerjee versus Arvind Kejriwal, uh, Arvind Kejriwal's numbers are coming more evenly spread from many other states vis-a-vis -vis Mamta Banerjee's number, which are more concentrated uh, from one state and less from the other state. Interesting. Rahul Varma, your first reactions to these numbers. Are we seeing some kind of shifting signs at all as... Uh, Yashwant has clarified if you add Sonia Gandhi, Priyanka Gandhi, then of course Rahul Gandhi and the Congress voters will choose someone possibly from the Gandhi family. But the non-Congress voters seem to be looking at options beyond the Gandhi family, Mamta Kejriwal top two. That's correct, uh, Razdi. Uh, basically, Congress is the largest opposition party. But even Congress leaders, if they are not on TV and you talk to them, they are not even sure whom to back among the Congress leadership, right? So Rahul Gandhi is one name, but of course there are other names. And that's why within the Congress party, for example, on this question, Rahul Gandhi's percentage is 11, Sonia Gandhi is 10. So if you add them, they are at 20%, which is what Congress party's vote share is. Mm -hmm. Now, you and I both have written about this, that at the moment, it's not only BJP versus who but there is also a game going on among india's political parties especially among the opposition that who is going to emerge as the challenger or number two at the moment both tmc and AAP have their eyes set on basically taking the number two position in some ways they are cannibalizing the congress and right. congress its inability to basically solve its own challenges is opening up the space for grab and so number two Going forward, this year is going to be basically, in a way, indication how fast Congress support base is going to erode and who among Mamta or Arvind Kejriwal is going to take up that space. Okay, before Rahul gives us the biggest uh, picture of best suited to revive Congress, let's get uh, quick reactions to what we have just uh, put out. Mamta Banerjee is seen uh, possibly uh, riding the wind of what she did in uh, Bengal as a possible challenger, as someone who can even build a united opposition. Uh, Mr. Sappal, you want to react from the Congress party that the possibility that Mamta Banerjee could be someone who could be a magnet for opposition leaders? Or do you also believe like Congress people are telling me on my WhatsApp that this is a rigged poll? I think, uh, Rajdeep, this debate is a bit outdated. Because few weeks back, when Ms. Mamta Banerjee did say that where is UPA, the entire country saw the reaction of all the major opposition parties, be it NCP, be it Shiv Sena, be it DMK, or even left. So that issue is settled, and even now, as we talk today, mm -hmm. and uh, Trinamool Congress, which is trying to fight and win and make uh, government in Goa, has now been asking Congress to come together with, with it. The same Trinamool Congress, which had given indications to contest all the seats in Uttarakhand, is not contesting at all. So this debate is already outdated and the mood of the nation is best understood by, I think, Prime Minister. In the last few weeks, the number of U-turns he has done, uh, be it on farm laws, be it on petrol prices, be uh, not including Mr. Taney in the uh, star campaigners in UP, they understand what is the mood of the na nation today. So you're saying, you're saying states, the issue of who leads Rajiv, the opposition is settled. Is the you're main, claiming that the issue of who leads the opposition, Mr. Sappal, is settled. Mr. Sen, you want to respond to that? That Mamta Banerjee, no, it's, it's, the momentum according it's, to the it's, Congress is over. She cannot be the face of the UPA. It is Rahul Gandhi and the Congress only which will decide the shape of the opposition. No, let us see the facts. No, no, let, let him respond, Mr. Yes, Sappal. First Benji, of all, also you said about Mr. Sappal, let him respond. How let many Mr. Sen respond. How many is going to get? Please, how many seats Ahmadi Party is going to get? The irrefutable fact is that in 215 seats, it is Congress which is the opposition parties. And all these parties, when the time comes, it, they will get together and decide. Today, it's too premature to say anything. The fact remains that in 215 seats, it is Congress which is challenging the BJP. Yes, there are regional parties. They have hold, They have been holding on to their own fort and they all have to come together to defeat BJP. That is the challenge. Okay, Mr. Sappal, you know, you keep saying 215. I might remind our uh, voters in 2019, the Congress lost a majority of their direct fights with the BJP with a margin of more than 15%, which is not true of the regional that parties. Mean... And the Aam Aadmi, no, just a minute that... now, Mr. Sappal. And the Aam Aadmi party no, is today a contender in Punjab. It could seats. be an oppositional force in, in Goa and it is also a potential spoiler in Uttarakhand. So you can't write off everyone else. But Mr. Sen, you want to respond to Mr. Sappal? Off. 
Mr. Sappal, now let him no, respond. We are not writing No, Mr. Sappal, please saying, allow others to uh, speak. Mr. Sen, please. do you want to respond that the Trinamool Congress is out of the race yeah, for the you. opposition according yeah. to Mr. Sappal? It is only I the heard, Congress which can lead the UPA. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Razdi. First of all, let me allow to issue Happy New Year as because I am talking to you the first time in this new year. I would like to share two important points with you in this regard. Number one, the mood of the nation. People of India, they have made up their mind. They have made up their mood. It's PM come publicity master versus the entire people of this country. This is the mood of the nation, number one. And number two, Trinomul Congress doesn't believe in infighting amongst the oppositions. Who is going to be the second, who is going to be the third? Our Supremo has categorically told several times to oust BJP, she would love to work as a loyal soldier of the United Opposition if needed. And definitely people of India believe Mamta Energy has got that credential and capability to be the leaders of this United Opposition. But you know, you are poaching, you're poaching on Congress, Congress leaders while you are saying that you are committed to a united opposition. You are happily poaching no, on no, no, Congress no, no, leaders. No, no, no. Before there, there Rahul is, takes there over, is, Sanju Varma, no you want to react? Poaching. Here are there opposition is, leaders. Uh, you know, who is, is no the one you fear most? Let me ask you a very direct question to which I want a direct answer. An RSS leader told me that Kejriwal is someone we are worried about. Other BJP leaders say Rahul Gandhi because of the Congress brand. And now Mamta defeated you in Bengal. Who do you fear most? Please give me a direct answer, Sanju. Na idhar ki baat, na udhar ki baat. Rajdeep, Rajdeep, I will give you a direct answer because I don't believe in mincing my words. I call a spade a spade. You know, I don't want to sound obnoxious. Uh, I don't want to sound, uh, you know, uh, somebody who's overconfident. Uh, but I will just repeat for your benefit, I think you understand politics, uh, you know, uh, far better than a lot of us. What J.P. Nadda has reinforced time and again, and what Amit Shah has also said. And I think uh, what these people say, these are the two big heavyweights in the BJP currently, uh, you know, that, that really uh, counts for a lot. The reason why today BJP is the only national party, the only pan-Indian party with no competition whatsoever, no alternative whatsoever, is because of a few things. As Narda Ji says, Yehi ek party hai, Bharti Janta party, jiske paas karya karta hai, jiske paas karya kram hai, jiske paas karya koshki hai, jiske paas karya le hai. Ma'am, I and asked you a question, who do you fear the most among the opposition? You are giving me the BJP's manifesto. Okay, I'm answering, Randy, don't get too impatient. You gave everybody a fair amount of time. You can't allow, uh, you know, uh, expect me to jump the gun to what you have to, uh, you know, uh, ask me. I just say this much. I repeat, we fear no one. And I'll tell you why. You asked me about Mamata Banerjee. Fine, Mamata Banerjee defeated the BJP in the Bengal Assembly elections, but you forget that BJP increased its tally from a measly three seats in 2016 to 77 seats this time around, which is more than a 1400% jump. And you tell me, Rajni, outside of Bengal, where is Mamata Banerjee a force to recognize? Mamata Banerjee and her team tried to level that in the Tripura local body poll, saying, BJP ko saaf kar denge. Mamata Banerjee, Srinamul Congress won. Just one seat, eight seat BP. Okay. We won 329 out of the 334 seats in Tripura local body poll, which works out to more than a 90. So you fear no one. Okay. Ma'am, ma no. this is not the usual TV debate. This is on our numbers. Rahul, take over. Okay. So let's take our viewers through who people believe is best suited to revive the Congress party. And here, it seems voters are as confused as the Congress party itself because when we ask them whether it be Rahul Gandhi, Manmohan Singh, Priyanka Wadra or Sachin Pilot here is what we found. 19% of the respondents think that Rahul Gandhi is best suited to revive the Congress. <clears throat> now this is down from 24% in January 2020. So his graph seems to be coming down. Amongst These are not Congress voters saying so these are uh, general respondents on the question of who's best suited to revive the Congress. Manmohan Singh, despite his advanced age, his health concerns, 
comes in at number two with 13% of the respondents for some reason believing that Manmohan Singh is best placed to revive the Congress. Uh, Priyanka Wadra comes in at 12%, uh, which is just 7% short of Rahul Gandhi at number three uh, on the question of who's best suited to revive the Congress. And then uh, Sachin Pilot is at 12% as well. So Priyanka and Sachin locked in a heat at 12%. Uh, Rahul Gandhi just marginally ahead of the pack at 17%. Which is the best non-Gandhi name to revive the Congress? And here it confounds me no end uh, to have people say that Manmohan Singh is best suited to revive the Congress. And this number is not coming down. Actually, it seems to be going up. In January 2021, it was 27% of the respondents. In the next poll in August, it went up to 28%. And now 30% of the respondents feel that Dr. Manmohan Singh, our former Prime Minister, is best suited to revive the Congress. Sachin Pilot comes in at number 12, and his graph, instead of going up, is actually on the way down from 17% in January 2021 uh, to 12% in January 2022. Uh, Sachin pa Pilot's suitability seems to have come down 5 percentage points. Uh, then there is P. Chidamram who comes in at 5%. So he again is someone whose graph is going down from 8% to 7 and now to 5. Uh, only 5% 5 of the respondents think he's the best choice. Yashwant Deshmukh, uh, explain why Manmohan Singh ranks so high. Uh, whether you include the Gandhis or not in the, on the question of who's best suited to revive the Congress. And secondly, the likes of Sachin Pilot, instead of their graph going up, either have plateaued or are marginally down from where they were a few polls ago. I, I will start with the second question first. I mean, uh, like names of Sachin Pilot where people or the youngsters could have rallied on, uh, he was cut to size and brutally cut to size. I think... Uh, uh, people do not really see him as a long-term Congress aspect anymore. I believe that people uh, are looking at him that probably just like Jyotiradit Sindhya, he might, he might uh, very well leave Congress sooner or later. That's what uh, I believe has his numbers coming down on that particular question. Having said that, Dr. Manmohan Singh with his statesman uh, like uh, attitude and personality and perception across the people, uh, and, and his stint of 10 years as the Prime Minister of India is, uh, is pretty much a, a kind of a sobering num uh, name which generally people would like to cling on to when they do not have any other option to. However, having said that, Rahul, on the very first question, if you will tag along Sonia Gandhi, Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi's name, you will figure out that almost 40% people are actually tagging a Gandhi name if they really want Congress to do well. And that's an important and critical point to make here because I genuinely believe, I, and, and, and I am saying with all, uh, I mean, with a lot of data in my mind, that I don't see really uh, Congress doing well without uh, actually a Gandhi uh, leading them right now at this point of time. And of course, I do not see any opposition uh, game plan, any opposition uh, work in action against the BJP without Congress taking the lead in that. So without these two things happening, good, bad or ugly, this other way you might have to look at it. I can say with full responsibility that without the Congress, the opposition doesn't stand a chance as far as the, you know, contesting BJP is concerned. And at this point of time, without a Gandhi leadership... Uh, Rahul Gandhi Varma, leadership is there a way of using data to try and answer this question? Because you've got the likes of Yashwan Deshmukh saying that there is no Congress without the Gandhis. And then there are many who would argue that that's only because they hold the top position at this moment. The moment uh, they're out of the way, somebody else comes in. Democracies and nature have a way of throwing up leaders, uh, whether it is a Channi in Punjab uh, or it is uh, the, uh, Bhupesh Bhagel in Chhattisgarh. You will find somebody new who will come in, fill the void. Looked at from the perspective of parties who've been in similar situations to the Congress internationally, which of the two is more likely in your view, Rahul Varma? Uh, there is an old saying that no one acquire powers for the sake of giving it, right? So Gandhis are making every effort to hold on to the Congress party. And I don't think they are going to just fall by the wayside. If Congress party wants to see a future for itself without the Gandhi, that sort of effort has to come within the party. The shakeup has to happen within the party. It's not that Gandhis are going to say, okay, we are going to retire from Congress.
business and politics now someone should take over that's now that's not how big organizations or companies are run and neither political parties can be done power is acquired and someone if if if, if in the wisdom of congress leadership they think that they are better off without gandhis uh, they have to do the shake up i think what's much more interesting and this is in in a way like you know as yashwan ji also pointed out that manmohan singh's perception of a learned person of being the prime minister of 10 years basically gives him the number that he's getting around 30% but think of it can manmohan singh actually revive the congress now he's like 90 years old uh, i don't think he's in the best of the health to basically revive a party like congress which is basically continuously going down uh, it like in in last two years it has not been able to solve the problem that who's going to be the permanent president of the not permanent but full time president of the party a pol a party which aims to be national political party right. a party which aims to defeat a, a sort of electoral machine uh, uh, like bjp which is headed by prime minister modi who's very very popular and cannot decide and settle on the leadership question i think they have a big trouble in 2022 for example look at it like in seven of the six states congress is the main opposition party and they are well placed to basically uh, take on bjp and at least win couple of states but what is congress party doing rather than focusing on the states which is in its sort of reach for example punjab or uttarakhand the congress leadership seems to be hell bent on on doing well in up oh yes you could be part of their your 2024 game plan but in reality congress like will be, find very hard even to get 10% of the seats in up Let so me... congress is focusing or spending its energy on places on questions on states which, which is not going to give it give them electoral dividend congress needs now a, some sort of like reality check and and i think people have been writing and saying this for now at least 5 to 10 years uh, congress is, is is basically in a big, Raul, big trouble uh, there will if Raul, congress needs stop to you because survive, we need to move on it needs a shake up you know it needs a reality check it needs a shake up because interestingly you are you are raising this on a day when uh, sonia uh, when priyanka gandhi wadra and rahul gandhi addressed a press conference on uttar pradesh putting out a youth manifesto for up and in fact when the question was asked who is your chief ministerial face for up priyanka gandhi wadra said well you see my face everywhere almost suggesting Razi, as if she I, may I, well be I... the face of the congress for uttar pradesh but you make a good point about which states the congress should be focusing on and where they should be investing the energies on because we asked this role of the congress as the opposition it's one thing to uh, claim you are the number one opposition are you doing enough role of the congress as opposition good 41% in january 2021 was 38% in august 21 it's now down to 33% average was 32% in january 2021 it's down to 22% poor has gone up from 22% to 39% feel the congress is performing poorly as an opposition also asked in this question was is the congress better off without the gandhis very very contentious question in uh, january 2021 52% said yes this is down to 49% now can't say 13% then 11% now no 35% is up 41% so it's almost as if people feel the gandhis remain essential to the congress at the same time or the role of the congress as the opposition is under question are they doing enough manisha priyam is also joining us at this point manisha priyam do you believe that the congress is essential for the revival of the opposition to take on the bjp in 2024 but it's not doing enough at the moment or as rahul verma just said it's not using its energies in the right direction no i think uh, there needs to be an important supplement one the landscape the canvas on which the congress has to paint now is completely shifted and changed one has to fight against the anti incumbency remember your yesterday's motn told us that economic issues have come to the fore people are crying horse now to that the best bet opposition to the modi government has been regional politics now for the congress party their upa model where they had one department that did the governance that was led by manmohan singh who even then did not lead the politics and the congress then came to power by virtue of winning in certain states but more than that 
by virtue of their alliances with regional parties now the congress therefore to revive needs to rely on its own regional satraps therefore its best performing assets whether it's a sachin pilot in your survey or it's a dk shiv kumar they will be seen as regional assets to that extent i would give some marks to priyanka gandhi right now for saying that whether we win or we lose i need to stay back in uttar pradesh and i need to write the script here because they need to be in the regional arenas you will be surprised uh, rajdeep that in goa where you are so much aware what the state of flux of political parties is amongst the poor when i did the interviews they were single minded in saying that the congress was the best political party for us so and the- amongst them many migrants from karnataka so-, so here we have a party that does not have regional leaders at this point they should even forget about the race with mr modi which mr rahul gandhi or priyanka gandhi cannot win they need to reinvent the electoral script in states and that's extremely important very, how they do it in the hindi heartland that's very, very, very interesting you are saying congress yeah. needs to focus on building regional assets building strong regional leaders the gandhi family in a sense can be uh here in delhi but the real battles have to be fought in the state capitals i hope kudeep yes. sapal you are listening to what is being said because one of the questions we asked role of the opposition during the pandemic only criticize the government was 51% said that in august it's gone up to 53% held government accountable 33 37% said that in august it's now at 32% so the perception is and you are hearing interesting view points the congress needs to ensure a greater decentralization you need to fight state elections against the bjp with state empowered leaders the focus cannot only be on the gandhi family and rahul gandhi and priyanka gandhi vadra is there a recognition that your future lies in the states at the moment not in delhi necessarily that's you got to start bottom up uh, there are two three points that have come in this debate so far Number one, in 2014, Dr. Manmohan Singh said that history will treat me kinder. I think we are seeing a vindication, and people have already started in India treating him kinder and seeing that what a great prime minister he was. Unnecessary vilified. That your survey also brings it out. That's the hope that he held out for people. Number two about Gandhi family. I think it is quite unfair criticism of Gandhi family. Last time a Gandhi became prime minister was in 89, which is 33 years back. 15 years Congress. had a prime minister after that and if if gandhi chose not to be the prime minister i think if you can suggest modi ji to become bjp president for next 20 years and not be the prime minister then see the value of what gandhi did or tell today right. yogi ji that next 30 years you'll be president of bjp but you'll not be the chief minister then you'll understand what gandhi did for the congress party gandhi this is their party it is like asking gandhi to step behind is like saying that tomorrow Uh, RSS will say that okay, we have been with BJP for very long, so let us quit BJP and go to some other party. This is party where Gandhi have contributed in the independence movement in point? building this nation. What's your third point, Mr. Sapna? Now, 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 coming back to your last question, Rajdeep. I think Rahul Gandhi's leadership from day one has been very clear. In party meetings, he has been saying that I want a decentralized model of Congress Party where people coming from l- different backgrounds lead. their people in their states he says that this centralized model only will build congress party that is one thing and second thing you said that congress is not playing the role of opposition if i talk of last 6 months it was congress party's opposition that forced the government in supreme court to take a u turn on covid policy in pegasus it was under the leadership of congress party that the entire opposition was united in august leading to a inquiry by supreme court in lakhimpur it was congress party who led the agitation when priyanka gandhi went there and rahul gandhi went there so the congress party has been on ground it has been active in parliament it has been active in court okay, so let me what is the role okay, of opposition made, beyond mr that? sapal you made the me. point let me therefore take that to yashwant deshmukh as in as we conclude this segment yashwant deshmukh do you believe that if rahul gandhi was actually the president of the congress full time working president anointed as such therefore had both power and responsibility and accountability that might change perceptions people don't like non playing captains they want someone who's out there day after day not just on twitter but out on the street out in state capitals and that would make the difference that's the message in a way both to compete with other opposition leaders and to take on this government 
Absolutely, there is no doubt about it. There is nothing called a part-time politics, Rajdi. I mean, the contrast cannot be starker when you are dealing with the part-time politicians like uh, like Rahul Gandhi and a full-time politician like uh, Amit Shah, Narendra Modi, and others around their team. You know, who are doing 24/7 politics, and here we are having somebody who is not even leading the party. He is in the party, leading but not leading the party, not leading but yet leading the party. What exactly is the situation? You see, the, the the crisis in the Congress is multifold. You know, multifold in a way. There are so many common sense decisions, as you just rightly mentioned before asking me. You know, the the key is to look into your regional leaders. They are really good. They are very strong. You can you can go with them. You can piggy ride with them as far as your leadership is concerned. Okay. But look how they are dealing it. Chandni was a master stroke, but they clipped the wing by by Ashwin Siddhu in. Right now, Chandni's biggest problem is Siddhu, not opposition in Punjab. Their biggest base in Uttarakhand, the most popular guy in Uttarakhand, Harish Rawat, is still not being, uh, uh, you know, declared as the chief ministerial guy, and we, they are still importing all the ex Harish Rawat right. detractors without even asking him. And then imagine, imagine, have you ever even thought of the one chief ministerial candidate, popular guy from one state? Being made a state in charge of another state for full one year, being involved in that in an election year. Let me leave it there. You I know, think, I think we can. I you know, the say, Congress. Rajiv, you know, and I, and Yashwant, I've run out of time on this. The fact Rajiv. is, we could go on writing the obituaries of the Congress, but the Congress would turn around and say reports of my death are grossly exaggerated. But either way. This is the year where the Congress has an opportunity because in seven of the eight states they are in direct opposition to the BJP. Can they use that space or will others like Arvind Kejriwal, who remember is also now emerging as a contender in states like Punjab, will he occupy the opposition space? In 2022, the opposition space will be fascinating. Mamta Banerjee also has national ambitions. In this section on India Today, Mood of the Nation, we look at how Voters in the mood of the nation have responded to questions about the government's handling of the COVID situation. I want to welcome Dr. Narish Trehan, Chairman and Managing Director Medanta, the MediCity. And we've got Dr. Shashank Joshi. He's a member of the COVID Task Force in Maharashtra. Let's take you through question number one. How do people assess the center's handling of COVID? Remember, uh, perception about the government's handling of COVID had crashed in August 2021 in comparison in January 2022 there's been a sharp about 17% upswing from 49 to 66% the number of respondents who think the government has done a good job in handling COVID the number of people who think the government's handling has been average is at 16% which again is a big drop from 30% so those who largely were in the average uh, category now seem to have moved to the good category because the number who thought the government's handling has been poor has come down only marginally from 19 to 16 percent that's a, a data set that will give great relief to the government where about two-thirds of the respondents think the government has handled the biggest challenge of the day well uh, question number two how do you respond about the state's handling of covid your particular state how do you think the states have done 62 percent saying good this was 55% uh, in August, 17% saying average, and 18% saying poor. Uh, Dr. Trehan, the fact that the government's perception about the handling of the COVID situation has improved from 49 to 66%, is that just good marketing or is this something which people feel they can see what's happening around them and therefore they feel the central government has done a good job in handling the COVID situation? So Rahul, actually it's true that the central government has done, I mean, paid huge, huge attention to the problem that occurred in August last year, as you mentioned. And what came out very clearly was that nobody expected that wave to be so high and so ferocious that it knocked the whole medical system, oxygen supply, everything off, uh, off the feet. So the point now is that after having gone through all that, there has been a lot of preparation at the center and the state and also early sensing, all those mechanisms have been put in place. And there is a lot of preparedness on the ground, coupled with the fact that the uh, vaccination drive has been very successful. 
So I think all these things put together and the comfort that people are feeling today is from also again for two reasons. One, the preparedness for medical emergency or handling of COVID is already in place, but also the new wave, the Omicron wave, is not that severe. It is numerically large, still not reached the numbers of, of the last uh, uh, wave, but at the same time, it's very mild. So we are seeing it in our hospitals at this time. If you if you were to deal with the Delta wave, at this time our hospitals would be flooded. Today, even Medanta, which is the leading center for for all these things, has actually got 120 patients, and only about eight of them are on a ventilator. So there is a difference from what happened last year to now. But it is true that the uh, preparation by the government for this one has been quite. Uh, uh, sort of well done. Dr. Joshi, would you would you concur with that? Because both states and center took a beating in the first six months of the year. Particularly the center, they were seen to be unprepared for the second wave. Huge question marks raised about whether there were enough investments in vaccines, exporting of vaccines, everything that could go wrong went wrong. Do you think that that, in a sense, now reflects in the fact that now we are better prepared and therefore people also are feeling less fearful of COVID, of the COVID pandemic, including in Mumbai where you are, a sense of comfort has come with preparedness compared to six months ago. So Rajdik, uh, whether it was the first wave, the second wave or now the third wave, in each wave there were ups and downs. And I think the adaptability of both the central and state governments has, and their response has been uh, apt and appropriate. Yes, there could always be bettering, but I think the pandemic preparedness plan, both of center and state in the third wave, has been seamless. And that probably is from the lessons learned from the first and the second wave. So clearly, I think we have adapted better. Our vaccination story is a huge success. And I think we are now in the Omicron wave uh, without any major stress on the healthcare system. But no, is it, is it that the wave warrior, is milder or are, are you better prepared? Dr. Joshi, is it that the wave is milder or are you better prepared? People seem to be no, now having more no confidence in your handling. So, so Rajiv, I'll, I'll tell you why. Rajiv. Just a minute. We asked the opinion on the government's vaccination effort. One of the questions we asked was the government's opinion on the government's vaccination effort. Good is 82%. Average is 8%. Poor is 7%. The sense I get, first six months of the year, Vaccination drive was not taking off. That reflected in poor ratings in August. Vaccinations doing much, much better now. Therefore, people more comfortable. Would you agree with that, Dr. Joshi? No, I don't think that is directly correlated. I think my thinking is very simple and straightforward. I think it was the healthcare infrastructure and the frontline and the administration all worked as one team, private and public sector. And that made all the difference. And we are currently much better prepared. Government definitely played its role. But I would not put it, you know, government was adaptable to science and suggestions and they went by science and suggestions and we are in a better shape today. Right. Vaccine is just one of those factors, but I think there are several other factors. And I think this tsunami-like explosive wave, it is a less severe wave in terms of, uh, you know, the, the dent it is causing. But clearly it is still a very significant number. The number is 3.5 like today. It is not an easy number to handle. But the same numbers in the Delta uh, wave was, it was a much more virulent strain. So a little less virulent, a little more vaccination, a little more better prepared healthcare infrastructure, and a better uh, policing by the overall administration, center and state both. All these factors have compounded for a better response. Right, Rahul? It's a mature response now, and a better prepared response because we are able to predict it better. Okay. The second wave was unpredictable. Rahul? Let's take the question about lockdowns and how do people perceive <coughs> lockdowns and on the question of whether lockdowns help uh, spread uh, help limit the spread of covid 53% uh, of the respondents in our survey said they prevent the spread uh, of covid but uh, but impact livelihoods 22% said they prevent spread and don't impact livelihoods 14% uh, said don't prevent spread but impact livelihoods and 6% said don't prevent spread and don't impact livelihoods what's very clear, uh, Dr. Tran, is that people still worry about the impact of a full lockdown, but all that seems to be in the past. What this entire section on COVID is telling me is that the people of India, as 
have doctors as has the government gotten used to the idea of living with this virus is that the way that you think it will be if you're looking ahead over the next six months or over the next one year on the back of the COVID cases coming down with the Omicron wave how do you see things being will they continue to be in limbo could there be another wave what's your sense Dr. Thren? So there are several factors that come into play at this stage. One factor is that today truly a full lockdown that was done in the first wave is not necessary today for two reasons. One, there is some appreciation of people becoming a little more aware of what, of what the virus does. The second thing is that it proved the last time also that if you block the super spreaders events that is like the the restaurants the big uh, banquet halls even movie halls to some degree even when uh, when uh, the people are flying that they should not be so careless that by stressing it again and again we are able to say omicron is much more uh, transmissible it is spreads easily but at the same time because it's not so virulent people are a lot more relaxed. So I don't think that lockdown per se is needed for in, in its severity. But definitely the super spreader events should be limited, like the government has done, like right? restaurants and, and bars and all that have been having closed. So that's, I think, a good idea. So and unnecessarily travel outside and going to markets has been limited by weekend lockdowns in some states. And I think that's also a good idea. It's a halfway measure, but it does not uh, disrupt livelihood, which is also very important. We have so suffered two ways. So I think I think we are in the right spot right now. Is the way intervention is taking place wherever and whenever there is a, a real threat that the best explode. the best way, Doctor Trian, perhaps to describe it is there I durastai. I remember when the Kumbh Mela was there in March, April. Uh, the government was actually encouraging people at times to go to the Mela. Now I think governments have realized you cannot have these large crowd gatherings and get away in COVID times. It's taken time. There I durastai. But as we end the mood of the nation, Yashwan Deshmukh, you know, I'm getting a lot of attacks from Congress persons who are saying you all deliberately targeted Rahul Gandhi in this poll by showing Mamta and Kejriwal ahead of him. I'm getting those who are saying that if the economy is doing so badly in the eyes of the people, how come Mr. Modi is doing so well? Uh, overall, do you want to tell us as a pollster, how do you give, believe that this is a snapshot at what the mood is and people need to appreciate that? How would you react to those who are attacking us from both sides? Well, if you are getting attacked from both the sides, uh, you know, Rajdeep, then uh, rest assured uh, the numbers are bang on target. Uh, having said that, uh, uh, it's it's not. I mean, it's so easy to understand when when there is not a clarity on the leadership level, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, the numbers are getting split itself between Rahul Gandhi, Sonia Gandhi, and Priyanka Gandhi. If Rahul Gandhi becomes the Congress president full time and puts up a one united face, that okay, I am the face of the Congress, the numbers would rally behind him. Right. It is so. It's not a rocket science to understand what's the big deal out there. The BJP numbers are rallying behind Narendra Modi. It's okay. so easy to understand. I, I don't think that there is any issue out there. On the COVID situation or any other situation, you see, uh, uh, the, the, when, when you put up your face, you, you get the credit, you get discredited as well. I mean, both the things happen. It's a both-way game. You know, it's not a one-way traffic that you, you, you only take the credit and you just wash away if so your you're, party is you're not saying Yashwan. You are saying, Yashwan, that in August of 2021, last MOTN against the backdrop of COVID 2.0 and failures, Mr. Modi took a huge hit. Four months later, situation more settled. He gets a bit of the benefit. And therefore, exactly. you need to understand that politics is not static. Sentiments are not static. They move over time, which is why these sentiment trackers are important. It doesn't mean that that will decide voting preferences come state elections. Remember, that's a caveat that we want to add. This is a snapshot of the mood of the nation. Learn to appreciate the good, the bad and ugly. Introspect, course correct. Perhaps that's the way forward. It's been a pleasure as always to get a sense of this snapshot.
it's better than our WhatsApp echo chambers at times, certainly. Rahul, you want a final word uh, on, uh, uh, on these polls? Gets us uh, into more trouble, I see, all the time. Well, not at all. It's been a lot of fun and trouble as long as both sides are upset for something or the other. It's perfectly okay. You and I both recovering from COVID and hoping really hard that we can very quickly be out on the field tracking uh, this election. Not just through studio discussions, not just through these polling numbers, but actually do uh, what we enjoy most. Be out in the field, whether it's for job we met or for election in your plate in your case, and actually get a real sample of what's happening on the ground. That's what I'm looking forward to. I'm currently at home in this studio, itching to go out and recover from COVID and be back on the field soon, Rajdeep. Okay. You know, the state I'm most itching forward to going to is my home state of Goa. Plenty of turbulence by the banks of the Mandvi. And it's warmer too. Thank you all very much to all my guests for joining us here on The Mood of the Nation. As always to you, the viewers, read plenty more in the latest issue of India Today. All the details, how the survey was done and plenty more of the analysis. For now, from Rahul, me and the entire team at India Today, thanks for watching. Stay well, stay safe.